Hey, what's up everyone? Greg Kung here. We're going to be talking about stock footage in 2023. I'll give a quick refresher for those of you that are not familiar with it. And um, I'll just share some of my earnings across platforms. I've noticed a bump in revenue on some of the platforms and I'll give my predictions for stock footage. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're already in stock footage, Please share your comments below. Uh, it would be good to also hear what uh, you're experiencing. If you're someone who has an existing portfolio on Pond5, Shutterstock, Adobe Stock. So basically, for those of you that are not familiar, stock footage is uh, when you have video footage. Um, it could be images, but videos are what I focus on. It's what... I think earns more for media creators, content creators, advertising agencies, or even um, movies that require drone footage or it could be footage of food, nightlife, people doing sports, and uh, you get a royalty for these images and it can be numerous times. It's a great business model in theory because you can do it from anywhere. Videos have a long shelf life. They could, they could sell for 10 years plus. And now with the increase of AI, uh, I'm also seeing new revenue streams being generated because I have an existing stock footage collection. If you want to learn stock footage, I do have online courses that teach you how to do it on platforms, how to film it, how to edit them. All of that stuff, the entire workflows. I consider myself one of the early OGs that started to teach it online. It started to become really popular before COVID and it started to get really competitive. And um, yeah, then large companies, large stock footage agencies like Shutterstock started to stiff the artists. But I, I see a comeback now. So I'm going to share some of my earnings let's just start with adobe stock let's just uh get that on display here okay so this is adobe stock this is a platform that you can sell on and um yeah so this is adobe stock here you can see that um i've got some existing videos on here i don't have a whole lot i'll just share my portfolio on Adobe stock so Adobe stock was a late player to the stock footage licensing game but they they already have such such a installation footprint for video editors it's probably one of the most popular professional video editing platforms so within Adobe Premiere you can actually look for stock footage within the application and um, you know they can also uh, provide that distribution channel to your stock footage so that's one of the benefits of it so here's some of my footage clips and um, you can see it's a variety here i've got drone footage in mexico i've got even some cryptocurrency footage got some marijuana got some drone clips food even got myself taking video calls and I've made partnerships with uh, other models in the past uh, so that gives you an idea of my collection I don't have a whole lot on Adobe stock but um, my existing collection is performing for me um, in the form of some sales so you can see I've got $120 US to cash out I've made 170 US this year I mean it's not a whole lot not a primary revenue source that you want to live off of but the way I could scale this is I could just get more clips online uh, the other platform that is performing for me is what we call Pond5. So Pond5 provides uh, the same service. I have a larger collection on there. And uh, yeah, here's some of my sales here. So 
So they've got a new um, revenue stream. It's called data set earnings. So you can see I earned 70 US this month just on data set earnings. And uh, if you're interested in more of my earnings just on Pond5, I've got another video for that. But uh, I just wanted to give you a broad sense of the trend here. So data set earnings are used by large language models, LLMs, which are uh, sets of content based on theme. It could be video, photos, and um, they're used by AI researchers, technology manufacturers, and um, yeah, basically AI, the way I understand it is AI needs existing images and videos to be able to generate uh, their own content. So you can see here, what are data sets used for? Visual search and content moderations, product categorization, AI content generation. So yeah, this is great news if you're a content creator because now you've got um, additional revenue streams and with the increase of AI technology, I think that uh, 2023 and beyond could be a return back to stock footage as a, an increase revenue stream for artists. So this is just my prediction. I could be wrong, but I do notice trends earlier on. Um, so just based on sales activity, I have a large data set. I have 10,000 clips on Pond5 already approved. I think that, uh, you know, if you're uh, looking to get into stock footage, what are some tips? I would definitely film at the highest resolution that you uh, are able to or that your camera is capable of. I've just upgraded to a Panasonic GH6 and we can create videos that are um, ProRes. All right, so I'm on the Pond5 site and they're providing um, their technical requirements for footage. So you can use professional cameras, prosumer cameras like SLRs, wearable cameras like GoPros, drones, they, and they even say a minimum of 1080p, which is full HD resolution. And some general guidelines, accurate focus, exposure, proper camera settings, which you can learn in my course using a tripod or stabilizer while creating stock video is encouraged we prefer clips that have no edits if you have a file that's several clips edited together please separate them moderate color correction and high quality high quality or raw image so now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty so duration 3 to 60 seconds file size hd clips are lower lower than 3 gigs 4k 5k 6k clips up to 5 gigs so the gh6 can film at 5.7k so obviously i'm trying to create footage whenever i can in that format frame rates 24 25 29 30 frames per second 60 frames per second and um, look at all these resolutions here 51 20 28 80 for 5k so yeah pay attention to these frame sizes for your resolutions when you're actually putting your footage into your video editor and chopping them up we accept the following codecs so unmodified camera native codecs, ProRes, ProRes RAW, ProRes 422, ProRes HQ, which I've started to film in with the Panasonic GH6. If you're interested in filming in this codec, I've got videos on that. It's a higher quality, it's less compressed, holds more information. So for the consumer or customer that's buying your footage, they'll have more flexibility to color correct 
or adjust the um, exposure, the shadows, the highlights. And file format, MOV or MP4. So there you go. Those are some tips. And like I said, you can check out my online course if you want to find out more. So yeah, what's the next step? Get out there and shoot some footage. Um, yeah, if you have a good camera, you're already in a good spot. And uh, yeah, just get out there, shoot content, get a get a process, a workflow, so you that you can be consistent. And uh, it does take some time, some time and patience. But like I said, video has a long shelf life. I'm still selling clips from 10 years ago. It's a nice passive revenue stream. Will it, is it still too late to make this a primary stream? I don't know. There's so many videographers in the game now that are shooting amazing stuff. I actually, uh, as a YouTuber, I use stock footage on Storyblocks. I have a subscription and um, on Premiere Pro, we can actually um, access the library direct from Premiere Pro. So I can actually show you that. Um, and uh, I can also show you how people can access your stock footage if you upload it to Adobe Stock. So I think, uh, you know, these little tips here, here and there, I think they make a huge difference. It'll save you some time on just trying to figure things out. So that's the value in taking one of my courses. I've spent a lot of time studying this stuff. I've been doing it for over 10 years. And here we go. So let me just make sure you can see that. Let me make my face a bit smaller there. So here we are. This is Premiere Pro. And I've got some footage here I've shot with uh, OBS. And if I want to access stock footage from Adobe Stock, what uh, what I will do is I can go to Essential Graphics, I can go to Adobe Stock, and let's just say I'm searching for poutine, which is french fries. This is one of my recent sales. Um, sales that I made, okay. Not finding a french fries, no. Travel. Yeah, there we go. So you can actually buy clips directly from here. My main point is that if you put stock footage on here, you're able to sell your clips to people that are using Premiere Pro. So video editors, um, you edit YouTube videos or movies, so much video content these days. So that's over there. Story blocks. So we, there's an, a new extension. This is pretty new stuff. Anyhow, um, yeah, if you're logged in, there's a panel here. Basically, you can search uh, in their library for stock footage. So as a video editor, this is a nice resource here. Anyways, I hope you found this stock footage update video helpful. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you later on. Bye.